Don't ask, Layla. I said I'm not going. Are you sure, Leo? You've been talking about the museum's new Middle East exhibit all week. You love ancient Egypt. You even said Mrs. Johnson is offering extra credit. She is, but Mom and Dad are too busy to take me. And there's no way I'm going with Kenny and Karen. Ick! Yeah, they're not my favorite either. But it was nice of their mom to offer to take you. It was, but I can't stand those two. All they do is brag about everything they've ever won. I'd like to go, but if I'm stuck with my worst rivals, I don't think I'll enjoy Egypt very much. You never know, Leo. It's just one afternoon. It's not so bad. Not so bad? Do you know how many annoying stories Kenny can tell per minute? Well, sounds like you're stuck. I know. We can visit the Middle East with your phone. I can learn everything I need for that extra credit report. It'll be a cinch. I don't know, Leo. But I guess it's worth a try. Hey, this doesn't look like the Middle East. Hmm, look at all those presidents. I think we're in the White House. The White House? Well, that's cool, but it's pretty far from ancient Egypt. What's happening with your phone, Layla? Whoa, I think something important is happening. Shalom, children. Hi, I'm Leo. And I'm Layla. We're visiting from the future. The future? Oh, that's incredible. My name is Menachem Begin. And I am the Prime Minister of Israel. Nice, nice to, to meet, meet you, you, sir. Likewise, what brings you here on this incredible day? We were trying to go to ancient Egypt so I could write a report. But instead, my sister's time travel app took us here. Maybe you could help us, Prime Minister Begin. Could you tell us what just happened outside? Certainly. After America's President Jimmy Carter invited us to stay at his country retreat called Camp David, I came to a peace agreement with Anwar Sadat, the President of Egypt. Just now, President Sadat and I made that agreement official by signing a treaty. That sounds very important. Oh, it's something to celebrate. Our two countries have been at war for 30 years, but with this peace treaty, that is finally over. That makes this an incredible day for the people of Israel and the people of Egypt, too. Wow! I never knew that your country was at war with Egypt. I did know that Israel is in the Middle East. It's a small Jewish state, and it's where most of the Bible stories happened. You are correct. After being set free from slavery in Egypt thousands of years ago, my people settled in the land of Canaan, a land promised to us by God, and we called it Israel, after the name of one of our forefathers. Since then, Israel has remained our true home. It's filled with holy sites, like the Western Wall in Jerusalem. And now, with this peace treaty, Egypt, who was once our rival, has agreed to stop attacking us. Our connection to this land goes so far back into history, and our dream is to be free in our land. That's really fascinating. But don't many Jewish people live here in America? Why, yes, with our homeland occupied by the Assyrians, Babylonians, Persians, Greeks, Romans, and then the Ottoman Empire, we've spent much of our history living in other countries. I myself grew up in Eastern Europe. Eastern Europe? Yes, millions of us lived there until the tragedies of World War II and the Holocaust. But even when I was a young lad in Poland, I dreamed of helping my people return to the promised land and establish a modern state in Israel's ancient home. Wow, after all this time, your people finally did it. Indeed, we were very fortunate and determined. And now the country of Israel is thriving. Our economy is so strong that we can even help our neighbors, even though most of our neighbors don't like us very much. That's strange. Your country sounds like it would be a great neighbor. Why don't the other countries in the area like Israel? Yeah, what's their problem? They kind of sound like Kenny and Karen. It's quite complicated. Along with Jews, Muslims and Christians have also lived in Israel for a long time. Many others consider the Promised Land holy. 
When the modern country of Israel was formed in the 20th century and Jews started returning from all over the world, many Arabs living in the area didn't like that. What happened? Well, many of them fled because they were worried about war. We were willing to let them stay and become citizens of Israel, but they left for other countries with the hope that Israel would not survive. And those countries have started wars against us. Several times, I'm afraid. Good grief! I didn't know your country had to fight other countries just to exist. It's true. Believe it or not, one of those countries was Egypt. Until a few days ago, when President Sadat and I came to our agreement, Egypt was one of our country's biggest enemies. Ah, <sighs> but now that's over. Egypt is the first Arab country that recognizes our right to exist. That means we can stop being rivals and finally cooperate with each other and build greater trust. That also means more of our neighbors might follow Egypt's example. That would bring a much needed peace to the Middle East. That's great, Prime Minister Begin. Ugh, cooperating with rivals is so hard. What makes you say that? I have two rivals named Kenny and Karen. Their mom says I can come along with them to see a cool museum. I really want to go, but I don't think I can put up with them. Mr. Begin, how did you and your rival learn to cooperate? <laughs> now I could tell you that. But why don't we ask him? Here he comes. Assalamu alaikum. Salam and shalom. Tell me, who are these new friends you've been talking to? My name is Leo, and this is my sister Layla. You must be President Anwar Sadat of Egypt. I am. I'm here representing Egypt and many other countries in the Arab world. Very soon, I'll be telling my people some great and for some shocking news. We've just made peace with Israel. President Sadat, I know Israel was your rival. How were you able to come to a compromise? Well, as my friend probably told you, our rivalry goes back pretty far. Even now, Egypt is part of a League of Arab States, and none of those recognize Israel's right to exist. By seeking peace with a country that many of my neighbors see as an enemy, I was definitely thinking outside the box. But why wouldn't I? Having peace with Israel and cooperating with Western countries like the United States is much more desirable than endless war. I don't understand. How can you make peace with a country if you don't think it should exist? It wasn't easy. Wouldn't you agree, Menachem? Oh, I would. When we both arrived at Camp David to talk about peace, nothing was easy at first. President Sadat and I did not see eye to eye because we did not trust each other. Why not? Well, 30 years of war will do that. And while we don't agree on many things, I understand one thing. It was not easy for President Sadat to trust my country when we still have troops in the Sinai Peninsula. Sinai? Like in the Bible? Isn't that where the Ten Commandments were given to Moses? Yes, that's it. Like the Jews in Israel, Egyptians and Arabs have lived in Sinai for thousands of years. Naturally, when Egypt became a modern country in 1922, the Sinai Peninsula was part of it. But since the war started, Israel and Egypt's armies have been fighting in the area. Wow, but even with all that fighting and disagreement, both of you had to reach out and trust each other. That's Absolutely. right. Absolutely. I will say this. When the Americans encouraged Prime Minister Begin and me to talk about removing Israel's troops from Sinai, that's when I realized peace was possible. I had no idea that Israel would offer to withdraw its troops and return my country's land for peace. But that's one goal this treaty will accomplish. And that's not all. In return, Egypt is going to open the Suez Canal to Israeli ships. This means people in my country can sail through Egypt and reach India and Asia without having to go all the way around Africa. Good deal if you ask me. And you agreed to all of this with one peace treaty? That's right, young lady. Never underestimate the power of peace and cooperation or its power to surprise you with even more cooperation. I wish my fellow Arab countries would understand what I have learned from these peace talks. And it is this. Recognizing someone's right to exist means giving them dignity. And that opens up new opportunities for friendship and cooperation between different people. That's a great lesson. It sounds like making peace with your rivals benefits everyone. It certainly will, even if some people don't like it. I needn't point out that many people in the Middle East don't like this peace treaty. It's unfortunate. It is. And my friend here is putting it lightly. When he arrives home, he'll need to be very careful. For recognizing my country's right to exist, 
Many people will want to kill him. That's scary. Wouldn't that make you change your mind? Certainly not. Like Prime Minister Begin in his tiny country by the sea, I too have my enemies, even dangerous ones. But peace and cooperation that will benefit everyone is far too important to give up. Who knows? With the treaty we've signed today, more countries in the Middle East might make peace with Israel in the future, just like I did. We hope so. Prime Minister Begin, President Sadat, thanks for answering my question. Hearing about your peace treaty makes me wonder if I can't make my own peace treaty with my two rivals. Ugh, Kenny and Karen. As my new friend showed me here today, it never hurts to try. That's right, young man. Your rivals may never be your best friends, but perhaps they've more to offer you as friends than as enemies. Maybe you're right. President, Prime Minister, thank you. You are my most pleasure. welcome, Mazel Tov. Layla, if I'm going to catch that ride to the museum, I think we'd better head back. You're right. Thank you both so much for talking with us. It was awesome hearing about the peace treaty and all the good things that will come from it. Goodbye for now. Goodbye. Take care. Bow down in Pharaoh's presence, peon. Uh, no thanks. But it looks like you had fun. I really did. That Middle East exhibit was amazing. I learned more than I needed for that extra credit report. How were Kenny and Karen? At first, they bothered me. But after we got to the museum, they weren't that bad. Next week, I'm going over to their house to teach Kenny how to play chess. That's great, Leo. Kind of like your own personal peace treaty. I guess so. Good thing your phone took us to the White House instead of the Middle East. If it hadn't done that, I probably wouldn't have gone to the museum at all. Strange, huh? Yeah, Leo. Pretty strange. If you liked time traveling with Leo and Layla, watch more of their adventures at PragerUKids.com. And parents, don't forget to subscribe.